everyone, my name is Ibn and I want to welcome you all to my channel. Um, this is a completely new series called How Do You Do? And in this series I'm going to talk a bit about um, buildings I made, structures I made, exhibits, items and all kinds of things and I will slowly pick them apart and will tell you which items I used to make this, what my thought process is and how I generally start building things. As you can see there's a bunch of new people on the channel and I really want to thank you all for subscribing um, and I have to thank Mike Sheets for this. He allowed me to build for uh, Koali and yeah it kind of exploded after that. <laughs> so Mike big thanks. Um, and the first episode of How Do You Do is actually going to be about what I've built for Koali. Um, so I'm going to show you three buildings I made. I made more, but I'm going to pick these three because they all have some unique um, parts about them. And I'm also going to show you guys three items that I made for Koali Zoo. And those three items are going to be on the workshop by the end of the video. So yeah, let's start by looking at the buffet. As you can see, I've put this in a big white box so you can actually see it more up close than in the koali video because there's no guests walking around this time and everything is um, clutter free so yeah when i started working on this i actually made this roof um, for the education center and mike then made this into a blue a blue roof and this is because when I first started building for Koali, I made a big blue um, cafe, which at the end of the day ended up being too big to really fit inside the area Mike had planned. So he decided to go for a smaller version of it and he used the same um, corrugated metal roof that I made for the, um, yeah, for the education center and he reused it here. And then he asked me to make a small um, food and drink stand. And this is what I ended up with. This roof was really a pain. Um, it was one of the hardest roof shapes I've ever done. And I've been told by Rudy that it's indeed a pain to do so. I've worked about four hours on this one. And honestly, I never want to do this kind of roof again. It is insanely complicated to get all these pieces to work but in the end it kind of did so um let's start picking this one apart first of all i'm going to draw your attention to this uh, piece of corrugated metal this one is a green piece of corrugated metal and it's very important in every building in the Koali episode because when you're making a themed area it's kind of difficult to ensure that everything fits together but is still unique so the way you can actually do that is by looking at certain shapes and certain materials and those materials and shapes you can reuse in each building that means that each building will still have its unique features but it will also have a unique element to that area. The green piece of corrugated metal can be found all across the buildings that I made for um, the Sumatra area. You can see it in the education center, the first aid building and the gift shop. And I, tr and I decided to reuse it here as well. This binds it all together and gives um, guests the idea that this is one um, solid area instead of just a bunch of random buildings so yeah one of the things that I really like to do is actually use these food and drink and drink stands and decorate them on the inside it's one of the things you can do to incorporate it all inside of your building because if you just take a, um, a random 
food stand, it stands out quite a bit. So what I always do is I add a door, I make a custom wall, and I try to cover the um, logo. So behind the behind this um, wall, there's actually the burger logo, which you can't see right now. And it all fits together m uh, much better. So I made these signs, which is it's just um, a bunch of brace pieces and a um, decorative light brace for the text, which is kind of um, yeah the normal way to do these small info boards. Now here we have a um, small dispenser, which I made using these brace pla these um, brace plate bases, and it has napkins, ketchup, mustard, salsa, and salt. Uh, and these are the um, switches that you can uh, use and recolor. These are one of these are ones of the most versatile pieces in Planet Zoo. So if you can, you can do a bunch of things with them. They can be buttons, like in the soda dispenser, but they can also be like napkin holders, like I use here, or um, sauce holders. So it's it's a very versatile piece. Next to it, there is a um, a bunch of um, cups for the gulpy dispenser and I made those by using the brace bracket piece so if you stack them up it actually looks like a bunch of um, cups and that actually that makes it look very unique and you have no idea that this is a brace piece if you arrange it carefully so yeah next up this is something that you couldn't see that well in um, the Kuali Zoo episode, but this is a um, gulpi dispenser which has three flavors of gulpi and um, three buttons dispensers for each um, uh, yeah, flavor. So I used a bunch of these windows to make the outer um, rim of the um, dispenser and some brace plates the same blocks I used for the, the napkin holder I used here again to form a kind of plate where you can put your cups on and I've used the switches again for um, the buttons to dispense the um, gulpy. Now these signs are actually the standalone signs. So if you see it's basically just that one sunk in so you can't see the base, but you can still see the logo. This is one of the items that I'm quite proud of. And I will put this one on the workshop because there's actually a gulpy stand behind it. So this is fully functional and it allows guests to, yeah, to just basically, you can basically make a functional uh, guest area, but it will still look nice. As you can see, I use these windows here, but I also use them here. So this is one of the best um, hints that I can give you guys is look at pieces for their shapes um, and their texture. Don't just look at them as just a window piece. I've used the window pieces um, throughout the entire build and I've even used it on the small uh, rice storage sheds for the roofs. I used two different pieces of um, window so I could stack them on top of each other and they gave a very cool texture. The same goes for this. I used these metal doors to get like a very shiny counter. If you turn them around you have a very flat surface and it's very shiny and you can easily overlap them without getting too much sea fighting. It's really not that noticeable if you do, but it really works well. So yeah, here we also have two um, trash cans inside, but that's not really that important. So yeah, this was um, the first building that, I, that I'm going to show, but it was actually the last building I made um, before the episode was recorded and yeah so again to reiterate um, the 
tips that I can give you. Don't look at pieces for what they are, but look at their shape and their texture. And certainly try to turn them upside down because sometimes the backside of a certain piece has a very cool texture you can use. And if you are making a themed area or a themed village, it's a good idea to try to reuse the same shapes and the same materials so that everything um, is one solid um, yeah is, is one solid group of items um, and people still recognize it as part of that group and of that area you can do this again by using the same material like I used the green corrugated metal or you can use you can do this by using the same shapes so this is a shape this shape has been used for this building but also for the education center and both were based on the amazing roofs Rudy did those were just bonkers I tried to remake them with um, small brace pieces to make a um, tiled version but after like two hours I gave up what he did was insane so Rudy props to you and made it was amazing. Alright, so this was the fl first blueprint. Now we're going to look at the temple. And we are back. Welcome everyone. So this is the second structure that I wanted to show you guys. And this is the pagoda you saw in the middle of the village. This is one of the first things I actually made for um, the Kuali project. And it, is one, it was one of the items that Mike really wanted to have in um, the center. So, and it was based on a reference from what turned out to be a temple in Bali and not in Sumatra. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't really mind that too much. Because the result really looks pretty cool. And yeah, I'm just very happy with what it looks like. So when I first got the reference images, I'll uh, show you one here on the side. So that's that. I, ex I immediately knew that I was going to use the temple pieces for, oh, for the base of the, um, of the temple structure. And this is exactly what this is. So this is basically one of the um, temple pieces but turned upside down if you turn this one upside down you get a very nice and clean texture that you can use for a bunch of things like in Tarmashadi I've used it to represent rubber you can use it to represent old painted um, plaster and all kinds of things so the same goes for the rest of the base it's mainly made out of the out of uh, temple pieces that just yeah form and I've layered them in, in the kind of way that they just yeah pretty much function well the temple is actually big enough to put a exhibit animal in it but at the end of the day we didn't do that because that would have not worked with how <laughs> the whole um, yeah area was set up now as you can see I ha added these kind of dragon heads and I used a bunch of plaster to get the effect. So this on the side is a piece of plaster. Um, of course covered by this Indian um, face top. And this is a piece of plaster wall. If you didn't know it by now, um, the plaster pieces are some of the best pieces in the game. So basically, whenever you're trying to build something, you're probably going to end up using the plaster walls quite often. So the rest of this was actually made by using this classic Zoopedia frame, which is really cool. And I fiddled around with the colors until they matched with um, the rest of the um, temple stones. But I really like it. So I'm going to delete that so you can actually see the next piece, which is one of these um, Indian pieces. The Indian theme has some of these pretty um, pinkish 
pieces that are completely recallable and those are super super useful to make all kinds of things so yeah certainly look into them certainly use them to make a bunch of different shapes like these uh, shapes on the side are the exact same piece so yeah now how did i de do this little dragon piece well this is actually two different pieces this is the buffalo piece and the elephant hat and if you put them in at the right angle you kind of get a dragon's hat and it was meant to kind of resemble the Komodo dragon and I think it kind of worked out the rest of this is basically the sculpture base so yeah let's put everything back where it belongs so the next part of um, this build and this was basically the hardest part was actually making um, the uh, thatch structure now I've tried a bunch of different things I actually even made a, a piece of thatch using the vine pieces but at the end of the day the only thing that really worked was the um, it was basically these temple pieces because they are pretty amazing and pretty versatile if you're still thinking about buying the south american pack i would honestly suggest doing so because there's a bunch of pieces in here that are just yeah downright amazing let's, let's delete some of these pieces to see what's underneath so basically we've got this piece to create the texture you can see almost everywhere and this is something that most people might not have noticed so there's this kind of fringe at the edges of um, my reference so I tried to replicate that using these uh, African pieces and if you layer them correctly it actually works and it doesn't really look like a piece of thatch so going up it's basically the same pieces over and over again except that here I used a temple piece to get the red markings inside once you go up these pieces basically get way too big to fit and I had to find a piece that had the similar kind of markings but was smaller so because these temples tend to go smaller the more you go up and this is what I found this is a piece from the classical theme that is completely flexi color and it's a piece that I tend to forget so often but it's this very small piece so I was, a I was sure that I was able to use it throughout the whole structure and for the very top I used the same piece that the rest of the Kuali team has been using all across the Sumatra area but this time colored to fit the uh, colors of the um, thatch roof so yeah this is how I made it um, the actual technique to build the entire um, temple or tower or pagoda I don't know how to call it exactly um, is of course the mud pillar technique so you can turn things around but there's already a bunch of channels that have explained this technique and I'm not going to explain it again another piece that I've incorporated here is a piece that I really love to use and I haven't seen a lot of people use it yet but this is the mural piece and I've used that as the um, underside of each of these um, yeah, thatched areas because it is a flexi color piece so you can basically change it to whatever color you want which makes it um, an amazing piece to use so yeah this is the um, Balinese temple <laughs> 
or at least what was meant to be a Sumatran one, but yeah, at the end of the day. I don't think it should be replaced by one that's more Sumatran. I think it really worked and that's what ends up happening in these kind of theme parks and zoos. People who build these things often just do what looks nice, kind of the way we do. Um, I'm really proud of this build, so I hope it's not, it doesn't get deleted. But if it does, I might look into making another structure if Mike is up for that. But yeah, let's go and take another look at the at another structure, the bridge. As you can see, this is the bridge piece that I made for um, the Sumatra island. So we wanted to have like a fake bridge and I've actually made a bunch of things like I've also made a bamboo bridge that didn't up didn't end up getting used because this was actually more than enough. I will show you guys the reference picture of what this was based on. And yeah, once I've found that reference, I was really I really 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 wanted to build this. Um but one of the things that I always try to keep in mind when I'm making a building, when using a reference, is to never ever perfectly recreate the reference. It's always my goal to use the reference as that, a reference. And then I can just make it whatever I want and I can actually add my own touches to it. And in this case, I toned down the colors a lot and I made it fit in with the rest of the area. So yeah, let's um, tear this one apart and we'll start at the base. All right, so you can see, as I've said before, again, I've reused this metal piece, this corrugated metal piece, again, so the color returns in almost every building I've made. To get this small arch I've used this window piece and of course the rest of it is just a piece of plaster. To get this small piece of decoration here I used a, um, a um, carpet piece that Mike also used in his um, micro house um, outside area and I was so inspired by that and I really wanted to bring this back so I've used it here but I've also used it in the edu education center in the um, roof so yeah again this is another piece of um, carpet to make the nice texture at the, uh, the outside of the building I've reused the same colors again from the uh, carpet below and the same colors that were also represented in the education center. Again, so you can use shapes, you can use materials, but you can also use um, colors to bind everything together and to get one coherent solid unit of buildings that all are unique but still have a cool vibe and makes it so that people know exactly where they are and that they can't mistake this building for like a building in the African area. So yeah. This bridge building is also quite special because we start at a 3 by 3 uh, meter base and we go all the way up to a 4 meter one. And here at the top I've used a bunch of these bamboo pieces to extend the painted clay piece. I at the end of the, at the end of the building session, I've added these ropes because they were pretty cool. And um, yeah, this is one of those Indian pieces that I talked about, the pink one, that that has a bunch of cool um, uses. And behind this is another window piece. This is a very good window piece to use, the Planet Zoo um, window number five, because 
if you fiddle around a bit with the colors, you can get pretty close to the colors of the uh, plaster walls. So it, it really gets uh, gives an, gives off a very nice texture, and it's slightly um, less wide and thinner than the actual um, smallest plaster pieces. So you can actually cover certain areas you couldn't cover before. This piece is another one of those um, uh, carpet pieces, but this time I tilted it, so you still get a similar pattern, but it still looks different. Here the um, brace piece, here as well, is again made out of window pieces. Window, windows as walls is basically a technique that came from um, Planet Coaster, which is a game that I bought but never really played. I bought it because I wanted to get the grips of how Planet Zoo would be, but at the end of the day, I basically, basically played it for 20 minutes, and that was it. So yeah, this is how um, I've made it. And what I was saying about the... Um, the windows as wall technique, it's a technique that already existed in the Planet Coaster community, but I haven't seen used a lot in um, the Planet Zoo community. And we do have a bunch of window pieces that are very, very versatile. So you can actually use them for a bunch of things. If you look carefully at the Koali Zoo episode, you can actually see that I've used those pieces for a bunch of things. I've used it in the gift shop as trims, I've used it in the education center as benches, or and, and then um, Mike used them as well for the um, first aid center. So these window pieces are very, very versatile, so you can actually use them for a bunch of things. So seriously, take a look at them, try to do a bunch of things with them, and the next item that I'm going to show and which is one of the items that I'm going to put on the workshop, actually uses these pieces as well. So yeah, here we are. We are at the next piece that I wanted to show, because this is something I'm incredibly proud of. This is a water cooler, and the idea behind this water cooler in the first aid center was that once you get to the first aid center, you won't have to pay for a drink because most often you're just dehydrated when you end up there so it didn't make sense to make like a vending machine or something else so I went for a bunch of water coolers and as I mentioned before I actually used window pieces here as well so let's take a look the outsides are a bunch of window pieces the front is also a window piece these ones are actually the switch pieces, but the outlet version. I've used another outlet over here, and then I just used a bunch of art shapes to create the water cooler effect. This is one of the items that I'm really, really proud of. Um, I just had the idea to make them, and I hadn't seen them in any other build yet, so I decided to to make these as well. These will be available on the workshop um, with the with in two versions, like the double version you have here with the cups and a single version as well. So yeah, let's go and take a look at the next item. All right, so this is the second to last item that I made. And this is the last item that I'm also going to be putting on a workshop, which is a bunch of baskets filled with gifts. It was part of the gift shop and I made similar baskets for uh, my gift shop in Tarmashadi. And I tried to reuse the same techniques over here, but I used different pieces so that the two gift shops were still unique and were in a carbon copy of each other. So yeah, let's dig in and take a look at what they are. So basically, this is a simple basket piece, but I really wanted to have like a nice trimmer around it. So I used one of these African pots. And if you position it carefully, 
It actually really looks like a cool basket and it looks like a piece of fabric trim around the um, yeah around the basket and it makes a very, it gives a very gift shop feel that I really really love. And of course I've used a bunch of art shapes to s simulate a bunch of toys. I also made a version with um, switches and a version with sticks because yeah why not it looks cool and it's something different these are the African uh, bunting beads which I also really like I don't really know what they would be representing in real life but yeah it's cool and again here's a switch piece that I've used to represent something else than a switch this is basically just a stand with a price tag on, so you know how much each of these items costs. So yeah. This is also one of the items that I'm going to be putting on workshop. So I hope you guys will enjoy that. So this is a piece that will kind of reveal itself as you can already see it. But this is, um, these are two this is a cupboard and two boxes that were featured inside of the education center. I've been using this trick a lot in both Tharmashadi, Everton Zoo and other uh, builds that I've made. And yeah, it's actually a very simple trick once again. It's the same thing I've been saying over and over again. Don't look at things as the things they are, but what they could be. This is again a door piece which is pretty cool this is another door piece and this is a piece that I can honestly say that I use a bunch of time I've used it to make crates I may use them to make these these yeah these boxes where they can put toys in and other education stuff you can make so many cool things with this piece and the best of all it's a flexi color piece. So again, you can make the most amazing things with this item. The same goes for this. This is another door piece that I've turned upside down and it is also flexi color. So you can actually change the metal color that you have here. An important thing to notice when you use these pieces to make cupboards and other kinds of closets, don't forget to put the light color on the darkest black you can make it. That way, at night, this area won't light up and it won't look like there's a light inside of these closets. So yeah, thank you guys for watching the uh, first episode of How Do You Do? Um, I really had a blast um, making all these things for Kuali. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy seeing a closer look at these items because, of course, during an episode, you can't really spend that much time on every single detail. Um, and the episode was already 15 minutes long, so I couldn't have expected from Mike to basically look into every single thing I made. So that's why I kind of also made this video so you guys can actually see what all these things were made of and that you might be able to build these things in the future so i'll be uploading a bunch of the things that i've made to the workshop i hope you guys enjoy them a lot and i hope you guys will enjoy the channel as well i know a bunch of you already subscribed in the past but like a big bunch of you um have just subscribed in the past few hours so yeah i hope you guys like it um and I want to end this video by thanking you all for subscribing and watching. And especially thank um, Mike Sheets because he has been amazing. He has been plugging me wherever he can. And he allowed me to help him out and, and, and that was a big honor for me. So I'm glad you guys liked um, what I've built in Kowali. It really means a lot to me. And yeah, I hope to see you guys in the future. Bye.